Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to get janky with Genki? Uh, what? You don't know what that is? Ooh, that means I get to tell you. Once upon a time in a little country named Japan, two ex-Sega employees started their own game development studio, which was called Genki. Now, Genki never really became a very large development studio. Even now, their office only has 150 people, which is still more people than the amount of humans who actually work on YouTube. And they made multiple games with multiple genres trying to find their niche. And they finally did in the mid 90s with their racing games, with the most successful thing they've ever worked on being a racing series called Shotoko Battle, or as it's known in the US, Tokyo Extreme Racer. Raise your hand if you own that game. I said raise your... Oh, never mind then. They also did a Pokemon ripoff called Jade Cocoon. I might check that and see if it's review worthy. Get, Get to, to the, the point, point Stu! All right, all right, all right. We're going to play some mech games. No, not mech games. Mech games. You know, the games where you get in the most Japanese robot you can find and just blow shit up all over the place. Well, Genki got into that action head first and started releasing games on the 3DO, the Saturn, and God knows what else. Actually, I'll tell you what else. The PlayStation 1. As a matter of fact, the first game we're looking at was a PS1 launch title. So this was one of the first games ever put on the PlayStation 1. And it was a first-person shooter. And it is called Kalik the DNA Imperative. What a mouthful. The story, if you care, is Big Evil Corporation has science lab on the South Pole and a mad scientist released a bunch of robots controlled by alien DNA that killed everybody. Now you kill them with big-ass robot. Boom. Also, world's greatest FMV cutscenes. So, Kim wants to play rough. Huh? Okay, Doc, you asked for it. First Kim blows us out of the air, now he's rolling out the welcome mat? What's the little lab rat up to this time? I don't know why, but the way this script is written sounds so Looney Tunes. I'm waiting on the protagonist to say, Oh, a wise guy, eh? Oh wow, they got the singer from Cannibal Corpse. I will say this, the FMVs are kind of fun in their own cheesy PS1 kind of way. I mean, look at our damn robot here. He looks like if the FNF2000 rifle grew legs. Deja vu, I've just been in this place before. Yeah, he may not be going sideways, but just you wait. Oh my God, this is the main menu? Oh, we got a green screen something. Let me, what have I got? What have I got? Uh, Well, I've got this picture of Bubsy with a Nerf gun. I guess that will do. So it shows you one more FMV that shows you a little map and finally we get to the point where I can say gameplay footage. Gameplay footage. Okay, now before we start, do you see it? Yeah, the HUD is really gaudy, and yeah, this shit doesn't even need to be there. It's just for looking at. But do you see it? Do you see the thing that is wrong with this HUD? Do you see the big glaring elephant in the room? What if I zoom so far into it, your eyes fucking bleed? No, you're not seeing an optical illusion. You're not seeing it wrong. The crosshair is crooked. Go ahead, keep looking at it. The more you look at it, the worse it gets. The vertical bars are ever so slightly to the left and the right bar is ever so slightly smaller than the rest of them. And once you you see it, it bothers the ever so loving shit out of you. Some graphic design is my passion idiot got the crosshair wrong. Who signed off on this and said it was good? I mean, shit, I could do better than this. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna make a better crosshair. See, that's gamer. Let me introduce you to the vast majority of this game. Going through long copy-pasted corridors. I know this looks like I'm looping the same bit of video over and over, but I'm not. This is what the game looks like. This is what you do. Go through low draw distance hallways and hope to God you don't meet a robot that tries to shoot back at you. Now and again, you will find a room and sometimes in that room is a robot. But you will know about that robot long before you see it because the game does this. Now, enemy detection sounds ain't a bad thing. Silent Hill did it to great success. And the sound of the radio adds to the atmosphere. The only thing this adds is a migraine headache. I don't know whether to kill robots or flatline. The gun is really weird too. It doesn't have any bullet drop. It has infinite range. That means if you shoot a bullet, it will keep going until it hits a wall. It will even keep the rhythm of your shot. Let me show you what I mean. Suddenly the gun is a musical instrument. I could do the Terminator theme with this. 
Also, if you're going down a corridor and you think there's a robot nearby, you can just spam the gun until you hear an explosion. <laughs> I just killed something without ever having to lay eyes on it. Now I know how the Clintons feel. Funny number! Now here's the part where I think Genki actually got smart. You go through all these rooms and you kill robots that only take a few hits to kill. And the game starts you off with 500 rounds of ammo. And whenever you kill an enemy, they drop ammo. So this level gets you to thinking, well, this game's gonna be easy. Yeah. Keep thinking that. So the first thing you really need to be doing- Repair parts secured. Oh, I think I need to mention this. Your mech has a computer that talks to you every fucking time you pick up an item. ID card, cartridge, repair parts, secure, repair parts, secure, repair parts, cartridge, battery, repair, 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 repair. Shit like that was a theme in early 3D games. Remember this? Hey! So the first thing you need to be doing when you start a level is looking for an ID card. Not just for unlocking doors, but if you take it to a computer, it loads up a map to your PDA. See there, Kalik was doing the Doom 2016 auto map thing before all y'all. And a hot diggity dab doodly damn dad gummit, do you need that fucking map. Otherwise, you'll get lost immediately down these copy-paste corridors. The mini-map helps a little, but once you get the actual map, the mini-map is so much more helpful. It's like eating pussy blindfold. You're liable to trail off in the wrong direction. Ah, top shelf. You know, I've already said so much about this game and we haven't even left the first level yet. Honestly, there isn't very much to say about the other levels. It's just the same thing, just with slightly different graphics. This long, empty hallway should sum up the entirety of this game. God, somebody needs to take the Casio away from whoever's making this music. Message received. Oh yeah, there's cutscenes by the way. The game tends to reuse cutscenes and use different audio each time. Like how I reuse and repurpose these Fursona stills over and over. It's furry recycling. Kim, what the hell are you doing? No one gave you the authority to go this far. Shut up, you fool. Everything has changed. From now on, I'm the one in charge. Kilik, you're mad. Who do you think you are? God? Yeah, and I'm a Jill Sandwich. Keep in mind, this is one of the first PlayStation 1 games. Before this came out, all we had was like Super Nintendo and shit. So this was state-of-the-art technology to us. Now we got stuff like 3090s and RTXs that give us marvels like Fallout 76 and Skyrim. Todd is in my house, help me. Despite this game not being nowhere as good as the almighty Skyrim, I found a lot of quirks in the game. For instance, if you strafe and go forward, you go faster. So walking sideways is actually faster than walking forward. Now we can play Deja Vu. Level 3 finally makes an attempt at changing things up by giving you bigger robots to fight that take about twice as many hits to kill. But hey, they could suck your dick and ass for seconds because you got plenty of ammo to go around. Right? There's also these damn turrets that if you stand in just the right spot, they either can't see you or their shots will hit the wall instead of you. And you can use the game's wonky wall clipping to cheese the fuck out of them like a real gamer stud and get all the pussy. You can do that to some of the robots too and they can't hit you. There's this one blind motherfucker on level four that if you get far enough away from him, he'll quit shooting you. Can he not see you anymore? Has he got like some genome soldier vision? I swear, Genki should have left this game in the the microwave a little bit longer. It's hot on the outside and then freezing cold in the middle. Level 4 also throws out this one-eyed snake son of a bitch that takes 45 freaking bullets to kill. 45 bullets and there's a mess load of these assholes. I mean in real life that's one and a half AR-15 magazines to take down one enemy. Yes I use that as a form of measurement. I'm American. Go figure. And I gotta say after a while of mowing down these bullet sponge motherfuckers you start getting concerned about your ammo. And you should, because level five is about to take the rest of it. Oh, level five. Suddenly all the enemies take 50 or 60 hits. You wanna know your worst enemy in this level? The floor, I'm not kidding. The floor has a trap that takes a million fucking hits. And if you touch it, it eats through your health like candy. So you better kill that motherfucker. Level five taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, yeah, uh, remember how you just blew through all your ammo killing every single robot you saw? That was fun, huh? Yeah, well, you're gonna die 
now because now you don't have enough ammo to finish this level. Good job, bro. Because once you run out of ammo on your main gun, shit gets real. Notice I said main gun, implying there's other guns in this game. There is, and maybe I should explain the game mechanics of this game. So you have a health percentage. That's self-explanatory. But what's this other bar here? Well, that, son, is your battery that powers your mech, and it's way more important than your health gauge. In fact, fuck your health gauge. That doesn't exist. If you run out of battery, you die. So it's not enough you gotta worry about your health, but you also have to worry about health too, electric boogaloo. The good news is every level has a glorified USB charger for your battery so you can get back to 100 again. Now, why is all this so pressing and important? Well, in level two, you find a laser gun that doesn't have an ammo count. Her. What does it use? Oh no. Oh yes, once you've run out of ammo in your main gun, you're down to using your battery energy as your ammo. So basically you're using health as ammo. And the true nature of this game finally rears its ugly head and the truth comes crashing down on you like an 18-wheeler with chainsaws on the bumper. Kalik is not a first-person shooter. It's a survival game. And that's what dawned on me when I accidentally entered a boss battle with absolutely no ammo whatsoever other than my battery. The door's locked, I don't have enough battery, and I don't have any ammo. I'm a bug that realized it's in a roach motel. I did find out that there's a cutoff to how much battery you can use with the laser before it will turn it off. So you can't accidentally kill yourself, but you know what I really need to do right now? Kill myself. So I just sit there and let the guy take pot shots at me. Oh, oh, that synthesizer though. Ooh, what we're looking at could not be more 90s. We got some CGI FMVs. We got some fucking synths. We are good, man. First game on the PlayStation and it shows everything that could be PlayStation in one video. Now your save data starts you at the beginning of whatever level you died on, assuming you saved at the end of the level. So I know what you're thinking. Okay, well if I open my save, maybe I'll reset my ammo. No. No, you still have the same amount of ammo as you did before. So if you want any hope of passing level five, you need to start the whole game all over again. And this time conserve your ammo, which is really hard to do in this game because you can't just run around the robots in the corridors. It's too narrow. You have to kill them. But the hell Helicopter robots will blow up if they touch you and only take a small amount of health, so that's conserving ammo right there. And they leave behind health when they die, so there's no point at all in shooting them. Once you get to level two, find the battery charger room and get the laser gun and switch to it immediately. And anytime you get too low, make sure you're near a charger because your run speed slows down the more battery you lose. My god, that is evil! There's another gun in level two, but only has three bullets, and as far as I know, there's no ammo ammo anywhere in the game for it and it's not powerful at all so why does this gun even exist to troll you what makes it even worse is they bothered to make a cutscene that tells you about the gun there's an erosion gun in a fake wall in my office so you think it's something important like it's a good gun or something but no there's no ammo for it and it's not powerful why i think that pisses me off worse than the crooked crosshair why would you have a gun that has no ammo that's like having a console that has no games who would do that so you know what? This broken, janky sack of horse shit has gotten on my last nerve. So you know what? It's time to break out the Game Shark. I can play hardball too, motherfucker. Ooh, it has a tape. Yeah, baby, Game Shark is about to make this game my bitch. If you don't have internet access, you could say that. Just call the official Game Shark hotline at 1-900-773-SHARK. You know what? Let's do that. You don't have any bobcat girls, do you? Yeah, baby, the power of Game Shark compels you to suck my dick. So here's what I did. That three bullet gun now has infinite ammo, but all the other guns are normal. And I didn't do anything to the health or battery, neither. I just gave us a little extra insurance for when the shit gets way too damn hard. I'm back, bitch. You miss me? Yeah, I shove a cactus up your ass. And I burned through that boss with only two health left. I love how he just shattered like glass. That's amazing. Carlos, you all right? I'm okay, Captain. The research is just down the hall. He could be contaminated. Isolate him immediately. Yes, sir. Captain, there's an underground passageway to the excavation pit from one of the basement levels. 
The ICBMs on level 10. Thank okay, you, creepy you shadowy robot well, man. Please don't ICBM. kill me. You know what? Do it. I also found this gun that has a mohawk. What the fuck? Oh, it uses battery too. How much? Yeah, we won't be using that. Next, we're in a cave and it doesn't have any music, so it's kind of creepy, actually. It's dark, there's a bunch of ambient noises going around, and until that fucking beeping ruins it, it actually has a bit of a scary atmosphere. Uh, if I have to hear that beeping anymore today, I'm gonna throw up. I found another gun, too. Whoa, that's actually badass. <laughs> Yeah, mow him down. Fuck machines with a fuck machine. Fuck off. You fuck off. Man, now it's real easy to get lost. These caves are just, everything's the same. Damn. And now I got tapeworms shooting at me and they're taking big chunks out of my health. That's the soundtrack? Man, their music guy really needs to- Fuck off. Next, I'm fighting a boss that's guarding a nuclear weapon, and when I beat him, I destroy the nuclear weapon, I think? The missile blows up, but it's not a big nuclear explosion? I- I'm confused. Despite all that lack of logic, the main thing I want to know is, does the missile know where it is? The missile knows where it is. I don't know what the fuck the final level is supposed to be. Are we inside an alien's ass? asshole or something? The good news is it's pretty short and I got to the final boss really quick. So you pitiful humans think you can stop Kim? You may have won the day's battle, but now- Oh shit, he's an animorph. Real powers. My empire shall be ravaged no further. Oh no, it's Mr. Kill! And surprise, surprise, the final boss just stands in one place and shoots you a few times. That's all he does. There's no strategy to it, you just shoot. He dies and we get our ending, right? Well, first you have to leave the room for some reason. I don't know what that's about. But after you leave the room, then it's the end of the game. Conan? Conan? Can't you see the truth? I can't see shit. Your life will begin long after the comet that destroyed. What civilization? What? I am king. I was the beginning. And I am the end. No, dude, this is the end. So, Kilik is this ugly, shiny, muddy thing? Uh, okay. What about it? Oh, it just cuts to the base blowing up. Uh, d did we leave? Did we win? I mean, did. Did we escape? Aw, oh, shit, there's something coming up out of the ground. What the fuck is that? Sputnik-looking motherfucker, what is that? Am I supposed to be happy about something? Is there something good in that big ball of meat? Oh, uh, oh, 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 explosion. Uh, that can't be good. Um, why is the music so happy? <laughs> What? I don't know what the fuck I just saw. You're really not gonna explain any of this, like, at all? I mean, was that a good ending? Was that a bad ending? What was that? Uh, I, my God, uh, my head, my fucking head right now. Oh my God. Oh, okay, so he did make it out alive? Maybe? I, I, I. If I may quote The Simpsons, it's an ending. Let's just leave it at that. Guys, I had two more games I wanted to review for this video, but this thing stole the fucking spotlight. What do I even say? It was part of the first games on the PlayStation, and it's not a very good representation of what's on the PlayStation. Or is it? We had 3D maps, 3D models, a variety of weapons, CD quality music, by quality I mean bitrate, game saves, full motion video, everything that you would expect a PlayStation to do. I mean, maybe it didn't do it well, but there was nothing to compare it to at the time. There was nothing else out there like this. In fact, Genki was the first people to make a first person shooter with a full 3D map and everything on the PlayStation. The game came out in January of 1995. So think about what was out in 1994 
Super Nintendo and Genesis were still making games. Like we had Sonic 3, Super Metroid, Donkey Kong Country, and on the PC we had System Shock and Doom 2, and then January of 95 this comes along and has 3D graphics, 3D maps, 3D models, everything. And the fucker even runs at a decent frame rate. So yes, Kalik is an example of what was available on the PlayStation and what it could do. Maybe not a good example, but an example. But as I said, Genki had two more games to make on the PlayStation that had to do with first-person shooting and mechs. Epidemic, could we please call it something else? Yes, we can. It's called Kalik 2 in Japan. And the third one was called Brahma Force Assault on Belt Logger 9. What a name. Still better than Epidemic, am I right? I've already recorded footage of both of these games, so I need to review them. Later. And, whew, mercy me, my, my, what a game. I got so far down the rabbit hole on this one single game that I just turned it into its own review. I wanted to do three games, but I didn't, I couldn't even say anything after us seeing all that. So I might make those other games its own video. Hopefully it'll be good. Until then, I've got a fuck ton of projects that I need to get working on that I really want to do. But right now, I want to say a huge, big ass shout out to all my patrons on Patreon, Project Godzilla, Commissar Elusive, Sheba in Rush Nerd, Royal Vavian, Joshua Kerrig, Butler, Feral the Gecko, and Harry Amorous. Thank you so much for donating to me on my Patreon, and I love y'all so damn much. Y'all make me want to do this. Now I gotta go to sleep. It's 2.30 p.m.